here we go. This is a 2015 Sapphire Blue Metallic Porsche 911 GTS. This car has a 3.8 liter, six cylinder, 430 horsepower engine that will go from zero to 60 in just under four seconds and has a top speed of 190. This convertible 911 is also my car. 2015 was the last year that Porsche offered a naturally aspirated engine in the 911 models, other than the very rare 911R and the 2018 GT3. Combine the manual gearbox with a naturally aspirated engine, and this car is one of the most engaging cars you can drive. I'm Edwin Martial. Welcome to Tech Rides. Riding along with me today is my guest, Landon Bennett, co-founder and CEO of Ad Reform. Landed started Ad Reform in 2017 with his co-founder, Kyle Conero, to improve the experience of delivering digital ads. So welcome, Landon. Welcome to Tech Rides. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great. Good to have you here. So I wanted to start off with the story, um, how we met, which I think is kind of interesting and kind of funny. Like, uh, it was about three years ago. I was the uh, CTO of ICE still at the time. And um, I would constantly get all these inbound uh, emails, cold calls, cold sales emails, emails, sales, sales, you know, emails, and and I usually, blew, I mean, I'd get hundreds a day, and I would blow them all off. But um, you sent me one, and for some reason, I actually read it, decided to read <laughs> it. You know, I, I, I would skim most of them, so I, I scanned that one. I think that what really got me was that it was a pretty personal. You, you had definitely done some research on on ICE and what we had been through here at Atlanta, how we, how we grew the company, and and um, you mentioned some people that we knew in common and. And I think that, that that got me interested initially. So I was like, okay, I read this email. Uh, clearly, it wasn't just like a form email that went to thousands of people. It was, you know, you definitely took some time. So then that's when I wrote you back and uh, we, started, we started talking. And then you sent me a link to your ESPN highlight, right? Yes, yes. Well, I, I figured it would close the deal. <laughs> yeah, so Landon has a, a, he was a top 10 on SportsCenter. Right. My claim to fame. His claim to fame, yeah. My one and, claim to and, fame. Uh, <laughs> for making a, a, a great catch when he was uh, playing uh, college ball at, at Warford, right? Warford. Warford. Hey, okay. They got it wrong on Sports Center too. Oh, they did. So, it's like it. <laughs> so now, so at that time, you were with Rigor. So now, you, you, in the last uh, year or so, you've started Ad Reform. And one thing that's always impressed me about you is that, in, and in that email was an, an example that you've always been able to um, figure out a way, and, and with startups, which is always challenging. Uh, how to basically find customers, discover customers, get them to be interested, and them to discover you. Like, I, I think that's kind of a unique skill, and it's, and it's something that, um, with a startup in particular, is one of the biggest challenges. How do you grow? How do you get people to know about you? How to find you? I mean, what, what's your view? How do you, how have you been able to do that? You need to you need to be personable or, or personalized at scale. And so what I've always focused on, in ter especially at a startup where nobody knows who you are, no one knows the name of your company, um, getting out there and, and getting people to respond to you, getting CTOs at, at huge you know, billion dollar companies to respond to you is going to take a personal touch. You need to do your research. You need to um, you know, figure out as best you can before talking to them um, what their pain points might be, the things that they care about. Um, you know what they've done in, in their past life at different companies, and if you if you come you know and you come and, and try to talk to them at that point, it's a lot easier to get a meeting because the person's like they get a million templates just like you said. They're getting all these emails and all these templates, and it's like I'm not going to read any of that. You haven't put in any research into me at all. You haven't personalized anything. If you're not going to spend the time to do that, then I'm not going to spend the time with you and talk to talk to you. I think just um, going above and beyond, uh, while it may take a little bit more time, um, definitely is going to land you a lot more meetings in terms of like in terms of a sales process. So really doing that research and, and studying, getting better and um, you know, better understanding how businesses work and the types of things people uh, are challenged with on a daily basis. Like I think that's super important. If you're a buyer, if you're a CTO, like you want to either buy or look at different products that are things that your peers have, have used, right? There's all these forums online like Quora and Stack Overflow and all of these different types of things where people, um, you know, in different communities talk about the products that they use. And so, uh, or the challenges they're having, they're like looking for some solution for that. So they'll ask a question on Quora like, does anyone know how to do X? Um, or is there any technologies that do X, right? And so, um, you know, for me, like you, 
any, any company that's selling a product should be looking for those communities and those audiences that they're selling to. And you know whether it's Quora or, or these you know Stack Overflow like I mentioned or, or wherever it is, like go in those areas and um, get engaged in conversation. Or, or if somebody asks a question that maybe your solution provides some you know some value for, like go in there and, and just mention it. Like hey, if you want to try it out, you know here it is. Yeah, what, what I like about that is that you're you're finding, you're discovering your customers where they are communicating and collaborating and, and, and discussing the problems that they're having um, and then kind of helping them there and then then they can kind of find you versus just kind of you know peppering them with emails and outbounds and um, it's just a little more creative a little more interesting uh, way to start, to get them to discover you and yeah. come come to you well it's also not just like there may be a scenario where they specifically ask how can I do X and your product does that exact thing and you may say like we actually we do that you know here here's right. you know, a link to our site try it out or whatever but there's other situations where like uh, helping somebody with something that you may have some knowledge on that has no like it's not providing you any value you're not getting a deal out of this or anything I also think that's super valuable whether you're in a sale or whether you're on a site in a forum right. like that like if they have some question with something that you've done before or experienced before and you can give an answer back you're not and you're not promoting your product or anything right. like that that's actually the most valuable content you can provide because it's it's free you're not asking for anything in return they're under, they're seeing that that you have a lot of experience and expertise right. in that area and they're going to they're going to end up like searching you or searching your company anyways right. that's a better way to get to, but, to and, land a, and that's like you know again as CTO at ICE if you're a CIO or CTO at you know, you see those emails coming in, and you know, I mean, you see them all the way. You know what? You know, it's usually some really salesy, generic thing, and you, you kind of want to avoid those. And you know, I, I didn't want anything to do with those. Right. Um, and generally, my view at, at ICE was that, or if if I have a particular problem, I'll find you. I'll find someone to solve that particular problem. I, I don't need ten thousand inbounds about something that I'm, I don't have a problem with. So that's what I like about your 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 approach there is that you're 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 not necessarily selling something to them. You help them solve a problem, giving them some, you know, discovering where, you know, where their their issue is, and then bringing them back to you. Yep. Um, there's actually this new technology that I think is blockchain based, which it's really interesting to me. And it's early on, so it hasn't gained a lot of adoption yet. But basically, taking the idea, kind of like putting payments into the sales world, right? So, um, like, I think it's called Twenty One Dot Co or something like that. But basically. They have lists, so they'll have like a list of CTOs. Uh, you as a sales rep can go on there and say, uh, I will budget $500, I'll put $500 in here, here's my message to these CTOs, and blast it out to all of them. And every CTO has a, um, uh, a meeting value. So basically you would say like, I'm only gonna take a meeting with somebody if they pay me $100, right, in cash. And so if they put in $500 and five people respond and they all had a $100 meeting value or whatever, like if they accept your meeting and say, I'll do the meeting, then at that point you can decide whether you wanna pay the money or not mm. and then get the meeting. So it, it'll sort of like, not only does it, it help the sales rep, you know, get out to more people, but it also kind of puts a value on the meeting a right. value on on your time and you can also um you can also so you can you could actually take the money and just take it for yourself or you can uh, put something on your profile where it says that that money goes towards some charity of your choosing so it could be um you know could be anything i've seen a number of different charities that people are are using so tell me about ad reform what was the idea that that you felt um you wanted to try to you know the, the problem you wanted to solve what, what's the what's the whole business behind ad reform yeah um, so, so just like I think probably how a lot of entrepreneurs start businesses, you know, from some problem that they maybe have experienced in the past, um, you know, individually or at another company. And so, um, you know, it, 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 like you mentioned at Rigor, we were a web performance company um, and we would like monitor websites and, and help people improve the performance of their website um, from like a load time perspective. So, um, you know, we worked with lots of different publishers. Uh, publishers like a CNN.com or a New York Times or, or whatnot. We probably worked with, I don't know, maybe a hundred different publishers. And every single one that we worked with would like constantly say like, you know, our stuff is, the developers would say, our stuff is fast for the things that we control. The things that we don't control are what cause 
poor user experiences on the site. And, and those things tend to always be ads or different ad vendors, uh, programmatic vendors, different things like that. And so um, you just, you know, we heard it over and over again. And so it, it, it became, you know, something where it's like, oh, there, there's a challenge here. Um, you know, there might be a business opportunity here. So that's sort of how the, the idea got started. You know, the more customers you get, the more people you get in front of, the more feedback you get um, about what you're doing and what you're planning to do. So I would always ask them about the pain points that I feel like our roadmap would solve just to see what they would say. Um, and again, back to that, would you pay for something like this? Right. Always, always ask that question. Um, you know, and even when people say that they'll pay for something, you really don't know until you put a contract in front so of them. They actually pay right? for it. <laughs>